Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're going to be talking about something I've been building over the last, I'd say, probably year or so. Um, it has taken me this long to get everything exactly the way I wanted it and to make sure that it uh, was not only functionally well, uh, functioning well rather, uh, but also um, something that is still going to be viable even though it's kind of a retro build. We are going to be talking about my Blood Diamond slash Stuttgart Gordon build that I've put together. This is also kind of a clone of the very first M4 that I had when I was in the army. We'll talk about that in this video as well. But before we get any further, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I would greatly appreciate you guys doing so. Any type of interaction, whether it be thumbs up, comments, uh, any of that type of stuff would be greatly appreciated as well. My question to you guys right off the bat is, what is your thoughts about retro builds? Do you think that they still hold validity in this day or are they retro for a reason? <laughs> would love to hear what you guys have to say down in the comments below. In addition to that, I am also running a podcast. It's called the Live Laugh LARP podcast. Myself and my cameraman Hefe are putting together this podcast to kind of show you everything going on behind the scenes or at least behind the camera to talk about uh, the different conversations that we have in and around the gun industry, some training aids, and then some fitness stuff as well. We'd greatly appreciate your support. All of that is down in the description of this video and in the pinned comment as well. So, all right, so let's get into uh, this build. It uh, has been a lot of fun and I am really happy with how it turned out. I will tell you that I have never rattle canned a rifle before, but um, it's kind of addictive. Uh, and that's what really made me cringe when it came to uh, putting this together is I knew that I was going to have to spray paint a rifle and I've never done it before. So I'm a bit of perfectionist. So there's that. So let's go, um, let's go backwards on this. We're going to butt the face and <laughs> talk to everything about what I've got going on here. Uh, first and foremost, this is going to be a CAR-15 buttstock right here. And uh, this is exactly kind of how my first M4 was set up when I got to my first duty station uh, at Fort Riley. Uh, we ran A2 M4s just like this, um, but this was way back in the year 2000. So I didn't actually see a flat top M4 until several years later when I deployed to Iraq in 2003. So we still had the CAR-15 stock on here. Um, standard, you know, M4 style receiver extension, buffer tube, whatever you want to call it. Um, the CAR-15 stock came from Brownells. The lower is going to be a uh, M4 property of the government style Palmetto State Armory lower. Uh, the internals are all going to be PSA as well. Uh, I've got a PSA bolt and bolt carrier group. The upper receiver is going to be a Rock River Arms A2 that I found on um, ar15discounts.com. That was pretty cool. And then the barrel and the barrel setup is going to be TNTE sales. It's going to be their 16 inch, um, obviously M4 style setup with the Delta ring and the non-F marked front sight post. And that's something that you're going to have to pay close attention to. The difference between an F marked and a non-F marked front sight post is a F mark means that it's going to be used with a flat top receiver, whereas the non-F mark is going to be for the A2. Uh, from there, I have a uh, Scout Light Pro on here with a uh, pressure pad right there uh, with some goon tape just uh, holding that down. This mount right here is just a real inexpensive mount that I found on Amazon. It cost me like, I don't know, like maybe 10 bucks at the very most. And uh, it, it does very good uh, for what I'm needing it for. Uh, what I will say is I did have to cut the sling loop to allow it to fit. So just keep that in mind. You can still use it. Just tie a 550 cord to the sling loop and then attach your 
um, sling to the 550 cord. And there you go. Uh, up top here, I've got one of the um, A2 style pick sections with a Aimpoint Pro. And then the Aimpoint Pro is using a Vortex low ring mount on here. And that's what gets me so low to that pick section, which makes it uh, really easy to do a nice chin weld for sure. So um, accuracy on this at 36 yards when I zeroed it, no problem. Uh, that is the zero that I like to use is a 36, 37 yard zero and uh, had no problems there. So Much better group still to the right a little bit. Need to come left, but a lot better group right there. Let's move it over. Yeah, we'll move it over an inch. Yeah, one of the things that I like about this so much is, A, it brings me back to when I joined the Army. That's number one. Number two, uh, obviously, reminds me of the movie Blood Diamond. And then number three, uh, obviously, reminds me of Black Hawk Down, Stuckart Gordon, that type of thing. But the other thing that I always remembered when using something like this type of setup is this pick section that you can mount onto the A2 handguard still allows you to use the iron sights. And that's something I really do like. There's a channel through this pick section that still allows me to bring myself down and use the iron sights should I need to. And that's something that I really do like about this setup and why this is going to be utilized as a truck gun as I'm traveling back and forth between, you know, here and say Kansas City or Wichita, or if I'm heading out to my property in Wyoming, I have the ability to uh, carry this with me. And I have light, which is good. And I have a really solid red dot as well. Uh, is it the best red dot? No, but uh, it still gives me that retro look and uh, is going to accomplish everything I need it to do. So there is all of that. Now, let's talk about some of the use cases for something like this. Uh, you can go ahead and build something like this and we're starting to see a little bit more of a trend with the A2 style uppers coming back into vogue, I guess. Um, hopefully we're gonna see a few more of these offerings from Rock River Arms, but I can tell you just a stripped A2 upper with the um, ejection cover and the rear sight attached to it, and obviously the Ford Assist, that, that's gonna run you about 250 bucks right now. So, just keep that in mind. It's not going to be inexpensive. You're not going to be able to find an upper receiver for like $99 like you could about, I don't know, 10 years ago. So that is kind of the downside of trying to do a retro rifle like this. You can find some of the uh, completed uppers like on H&R uh, or with PSA or even TNTE sales. Uh, they might have some of these as well. Uh, I can tell you that TNTE Sales does a really, really good job on these retro uppers, 
but they do have a bit of a lead time. So you have to take that into consideration because they just don't have inventory laying around uh, ready to go. They build as they go. So that kind of helps um, keep a lot of their overhead down. Whereas someone like H&R from PSA, um, they have stuff ready to go and you can purchase an upper and have it shipped to you in about, I'd say probably, I don't know, seven to 10 days. So there is that. I have another A2 um, carry handle that we're going to be doing a video here in just a little bit. And that is another retro rifle that uh, is, is a clone of one that I carried in Afghanistan. So if you are following me on Instagram, you've already seen that. But um, one of the great things about this as well is because it is kind of an M4 style, I have a rifle that is going to allow me the ability to do a whole bunch of different things. Uh, obviously, I can use this for predator hunting if I wanted to. I can use this for home defense. Um, I can use this as a truck gun and it will collapse down and set into my uh, rack system that I have, my Gray Man tactical rack system that I have in the uh, truck behind my passenger door. And it uh, works out pretty good. In addition to that, I have that rack system set up so that I can use a number of different rifles. Like maybe I wanna use my lever gun to go out deer hunting or something like that. Or maybe I wanted to have my bolt gun. I can put any type of rifle in there. It'll set in and then strap down. Pretty nice. I'll show that in a separate video. That about covers it for this. I just wanted to do a real quick down and dirty for you guys. Got a couple hundred rounds through this. It's been great. It's run well. It's as accurate as I need it to be. Um, and I, I don't really don't have any complaints about it. Um, is it going to be the best for everybody? No, uh, obviously everybody has different preferences, but at the end of the day, these retro rifles uh, look really good and uh, have a lot of flair, I guess, to it. So there is that. But at the end of the day, it's not everybody's cup of tea. I understand that. Let me know what you think about retro rifles down in the comment section down below. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. I really do appreciate everybody's um, support of the channel. Swinging by, checking out what I've got going on with the uh, retro build here. And I'll have another one coming up here pretty soon. These aren't rifles that I'm going to run real hard. They're going to be ones that I might put through a competition once or so and then just kind of shoot them as I feel and we'll go from there. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. Thanks so much for swinging by. I really do appreciate it. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Catch you guys later. Bye, y'all.